associated with this process. So I've literally just completed a 63 day tour of the UK. Uh, I was in the Isle of Man last uh, weekend. In two presentations in the Isle of Man. Uh, this week I've been up in uh, Lancashire at the two public quadrilla meetings in uh, Freckleston, which I think is about to be renamed Freckleston, um, and Ellswick. And uh, we actually caught quadrilla telling barefaced lies to the people that were coming along to their meetings. Uh, and I was giving a presentation in Glastonbury last night, and then uh, it took uh, five hours to fight the traffic to be here today. And of course, as soon as I got here, it started to pour with rain. But it's uh, absolutely fantastic to see so many people here. Um, we had a very interesting conversation with um, the uh, the police just now, and uh, it seems that there is, on a personal level within the police, there's an interest in what's going on here. And I think what some of these guys are actually doing is they're going away, and they are actually now starting to research it for themselves. Because you know, I got the guy on uh, on video, he was quite happy to be videoed, and he was saying that you know he's looking at it, and they have the same concerns on a personal level, but they're just here, you know, doing their their job as well. Unfortunately, of course, what we see is uh, actually prima facie evidence that you know we live in a corporate controlled society, which happens to be the same definition of fascism, of course. Did you know there's actually a totalitarian? Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we, yesterday what we saw was the the, uh, the police literally escorting the trucks here on the second day, ostensibly the second day of the, uh, the protest. Because right now in Poland, uh, the, in eastern Poland, there's a community there that are on day 60 with their standoff with Chevron. And the police are not getting involved. Basically, they're saying it's between Chevron, the government, and the people, and the police are simply there to uh, keep the peace. Here, of course, in this country, the police are there to carry out the will of the corporate controlled government. Basically, our, our police, we pay our taxes for being controlled by oh, yeah, yeah. private companies. Abs absolutely. And I mean, it, you know, one I think the story here is who is paying for this excessive policing. I mean, yesterday, um, uh, obviously, there were a number of arrests of people trying to uh, block the gate. That was uh, pretty well covered in the media. Obviously, the, the editorial tells a different story than the pictures. The pictures show the excessive force being used to remove the protesters, but the uh, the text, at least in some of the papers, was a little bit more uh, balanced. At the very least, what it is doing is raising awareness. It's putting the term fracking into the vocabulary across the wider population. I think this is the way that this has got to be broken. We've literally, don't, don't worry about the BBC or the mainstream media. Uh, basically, we've got to be out there spreading the word, explaining to people you know, what uh, this process is all about, showing the prima facie evidence that everywhere in the world this process is unleashed. unleashed. It re results in contamination of the water, of the soil, and of the air. And the health impacts are horrendous. And we work with we also liver failure, kidney problems, mutation in reproduction. And that's all fact. And people going into early dementia. You know, because what people don't realise is that methane is a neurotoxin. And methane is an odourless gas. So people are literally living in contaminated environments for, I mean, in the, in the in a place like Colorado, New Mexico, for two decades. And, uh, you know, although you don't notice it from one day to the next, but over time, you know, obviously, uh, people's health suffers dramatically. So you've got people going into early dementia in their 40s and 50s, as opposed to their 70s and 80s, which would be considered more normal. So basically, what you're saying is in the age of dementia is getting lower as the population increases, so therefore we're going to have more people with mental health problems looked up where we need access to the well, let's talk about the health issues as well, because um, you know the, the, the British government obviously is refusing to acknowledge that there's any possibility of any negative health issues, and yet anywhere you look in the world where this process is, is going on, there are negative health issues. And um, you know, the British uh, media, in early June, almost every major newspaper and the BBC, their lead story was 50% of the population will, will have cancer by 2020. Well, you know, this is going to accelerate that process. But, you know, we've got to remember as well that 64% of England sits above shale gas or coal bed methane. At 64% of the country, this is the first time ever that the fracking process has ever been unleashed on a densely populated community. Right. So everywhere else in the world, you know, to date, Colorado, New Mexico, North Texas, Oklahoma, um, 
North Dakota, even Pennsylvania. And it's much more thinly populated than here. And, and Queensland, of course, in Australia is the same. You know, three weeks ago, the Sun, every day of the week, ran a double page spread promoting the fracturing process. And on, I think it was on the Thursday, one of the articles they ran was um, trying to make the link between Williston, North Dakota, and the phenomenal boom, economic boom, that Williston, North Dakota has enjoyed because of the shale gas industry in the Buchan uh, shale field there. And the illusion in the, in the Sun article was that any community embracing the shale gas agenda would benefit in the same way as well as the North Dakota. What they weren't actually sharing is, I know North Dakota well, I worked you know, in the North American oil industry. North Dakota is 40% larger than England, right? so nearly, nearly half as big again as England. But the population of North Dakota, the entire population of North Dakota is 60% of the population of Devon. Right? So consequently, of course Williston's a boom town, because it's, it, imagine that, that's like England, where the only town is Cambridge or Norwich, so people flock to it, you know, to obviously get the work there. So the, you know, there will be people in uh, Williston who make a lot of money. The smart ones will make it and get out. But in this country, no one's going to really uh, make any money. But you know, what, what people are going to do is, unfortunately, if they, if they do embrace the industry and they accept the bribes that the government's offering, and, and you know they know there's something wrong when they're offering the kind of bribes. So what, what they're talking about is offering people who don't object to shale gas cheaper electricity. It ain't going to happen. Cheaper gas. It ain't going to happen. They're offering communities that don't object to uh, the arrival of the gas industry bribes of something in the region of a million plus. In fact, the, this industry, the Quadrillas, the iGas Energies, the Eggdom Resources, the UK Methanes, they've pledged a fund, to establish a fund of 1.1 billion to literally use to bribe communities. They call it social license. And, and what social license really means is public apathy. So when, when you see that they've achieved social license, what it means is that they've effectively browbeaten the community to the point where they're no longer objecting. And so you know, the communities, they might get a village hall, they might get a new playground for the kids, uh, but the reality is what they're doing is they're effectively condemning the next generation to lives of total abject misery. Of course. Ultimately, the economics of people living houses, if this goes wrong, it's just a Look, the property market in Balkan is dead right now. I spoke to a guy on, on Monday and he told me his house is on the market and although he's had a lot of people come to view the house, nobody has actually put an offer and when he's asked them, you know, why not, they're nervous, you know, because they want to see how this plays out. And in Blackpool, of course, where they have the, the track record, two wells drilled, two wells fracked, two seismic events, the property market in Blackpool is completely dead. And um, I, I, uh, I came back from visiting some friends in Spain who left Blackpool after the second earthquake in May of 2011. They put the house on the market. It was valued at 325,000. It's a beautiful five bedroom house. They put it on the market at 250,000, 20% below the market value. They haven't had a single offer. So when I came back from visiting with them, I did a bit of research myself and I spoke to a number of estate agents in Blackpool. And they basically all told me the same. It's a buyer's market, Mr. Brain, you know, especially if you're a cash buyer. Well, I spoke, eventually spoke to an estate agent who'd been to one of my presentations, and he said, you know, Ian, you're absolutely right. He said, the market here is basically dead. And he said that um, it was dead before the moratorium was lifted, but since the moratorium was lifted, a lot more property is coming to the market. And if, if the drilling and fracking process actually starts on the Wild Peninsula, most of that property will probably never sell. Now, also, earlier this week, um, I was contacted by a friend of mine who works in the financial services industry, and he said, he said this is really going to uh, not surprise you, is that the financial services industry are revisiting their strategy for mortgage lending in areas that are being targeted by the shale gas industry. Oh, really? Yes. Because they're starting to recognise that it's a, it's a high risk. Basically, it's a high risk which is what the banks are trying not to do. Exactly. Which is what I can tell you. Well, you know, one of the... One of the well, 
One of the campaigners, I wonder what he's doing there. Eh? <laughs> cool, <man. laughs> um, one of the campaigners in uh, in Blackpool who goes by the name of Gazer Frackman, in fact, people now know him as Frackman, and uh, he, up until two years ago, he had no interest in politics, no interest in, he was just you know, enjoying life. And then after the second seismic event, cracks appeared in the walls of his house. No, not on the external walls, but all the door frames came away from the walls, the ceiling separated from the, the tops of the walls. So he uh, put a claim into his insurance company, and the insurance company said, oh, oh no, seismic event, act of God. <laughs> okay. well, exactly, exactly. This act of God was Godrilla. <laughs> well, now he and many others in the area have actually received letters from their insurance companies telling them they're no longer going to insure their properties. So it's a double whammy. So these people, not only are they now in properties that they can't sell, they're mortgaged up to the hill whilst the actual value of the property is effectively wiped out. Um, and they can't insure the property because the insurance company is saying it's too high a risk. Uh, and on the subject of side duct, Jimmy, there's a... Uh, That's viaduct. And viaduct. Viaduct. Yeah, the Ouse Valley Viaduct. You know, actually, I don't, I don't want to sort of sow seeds in anyone's mind, but um, after the second seismic event in uh, Blackpool in May 2011, I must confess I'm a heap of sigh of relief because I thought, thank goodness, hopefully now common sense will prevail and, uh, you know, this, this is not going to be tried in the UK. And that's why, you know, when the moratorium was lifted, I thought, well, we, we have to do whatever it is we need to do to stop this. Um, but now, if these guys actually drill and fracture this well, I uh, will be absolutely praying that there will be sufficient seismic activity to cause some structural damage. Not bring it down, but structural damage enough, enough. to that viaduct. Because if it stops, this is the main London to Brighton yeah, Railway, which is a major artery on the commuter belt. And so consequently, if um, this line can't be used, then it's going to get everyone's attention. It's going to get everyone's attention. Most of people can get outside work in the city of London. So seriously, it can get people's attention. Really, Ian, thank you very much. Thanks this a lot. is Ian, everyone.